I want to speak to you uh, for the moments that I have right now on the title of the message that will be called let my people go if you have your Bible let's go to Exodus chapter 9 and verse 1 and the Lord said to Moses go to Pharaoh and tell him thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews let my people go that they may serve me deliverance is essential fear of demons is foolishness we're not afraid of demons demons don't jump from one person to another during deliverance the same way the sickness doesn't jump from one person to another during healing deliverance does not glorify the devil any more than healing glorifies sickness deliverance brings glory to God it glorifies Jesus Christ it is the ministry of Jesus he still does that today can somebody say amen Jesus cast out demons publicly, He cast them out privately and He cast them out in the synagogue. And God today is in the business of setting the captives free. God calls Moses and the Bible says that He says to Moses, I have seen the oppression of my people. I have heard their cry and I have seen how they've been oppressed and I have come down to deliver them. Jesus Christ is the new Moses. As Moses went to the mountain to receive the commandments, Jesus went to the mountain and He gave us the Beatitudes. As Moses went to Egypt, Jesus was also in Egypt. As Moses' ministry was full of miracles, signs and wonders, so was Jesus's. Jesus and Moses fasted for 40 days. Jesus and Moses both were attacked at their birth. Jesus and Moses both had a very intimate relationship with God. Moses wanted to die for God's people. Jesus actually died for God's people. Jesus Christ is God's sent answer to the cry and to the oppression of the human race. Why do evil things happen to good people? First of all, it only happened once and he volunteered. None of us are good. We have all fell short of the glory of God. We are rotten to the bone. All of us were born with sinful nature, sinful inclination. We were born under the oppression of sin and God saw the cry of humanity. God has seen the sickness destroying our bodies. He has seen demons that are that are vile, that are terrible, ripping people's lives to pieces. He's heard the cries of the babies being torn to pieces in the mother's wombs. He heard the cry of the humanity and he has came down 2,000 years ago in the person whose name is Jesus Christ. Hispanics call him Jesus. Jewish people call him Yahweh. They call him Jehovah. They call him Adonai. But he is Jesus. God's answer to your dilemma. He is Jesus, God's answer to your sickness. He is Jesus, God's answer to the burden of sin of abortion. He is Jesus, God's answer to your witchcraft torment that you were involved in. He is Jesus, your answer to the porn industry or the porn addiction that you had. God has sent His answer because He heard your cry. That answer is Jesus. Not therapy, not counseling, not Christian church, not a pastor, not a sinner's prayer. The only one name that has the answer to the dilemma and the evil that you are facing and that name is Jesus. The Bible says Matthew 1 21 and he shall she shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. The word save in there actually is sozo. Forgiveness of sins is only found in Jesus. Matthew 9 22 it says, but Jesus turned around and when he saw her he said, be of good cheer daughter, your faith has made you well. It's the same word made you well as in Matthew 1 saved. Sozo, the same word. Math, Luke chapter 8 verse 36 they also who has seen it told them by what means he had been demon possessed who had been demon possessed was healed the word healed there is word sozo what am I saying Jesus Christ came to forgive us of our sins heal us of our diseases and deliver us 
from our demons. And it's the same word, sozo. Healing, deliverance, and forgiveness of sin is one package. Let me help those of you who are coming in and if still you have a hard time in your mind, how can Christians be having demons? It's very simple. Jesus says, we preach the gospel of the kingdom to those sorry my Siri is speaking to me <laughs> Jesus says preach the gospel of the kingdom to who to those who are lost we bring the healing to who to those who are sick and we bring deliverance to who to those who have demons yeah. salvation is forgiveness of sins it's healing of our diseases and it's deliverance from our demons Today, what we see, what we believe for in this conference, what we saw yesterday, what we're going to see today, and what I believe we're going to see tomorrow, is Jesus Christ releasing the benefits of salvation for us. Our message to you, if you're tormented in disease and sickness, look to Jesus for your healing today. Don't wait until you die and then the sickness will be over. Don't wait for the medical industry to find a new cure. Today the cure can be found in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Cancer be it, whatever tumor, arthritis, Jesus Christ is the healer. He can save your body by healing your body today. He can save your soul by delivering your soul today from demons. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He has heard your cry. He has seen your suffering. He has seen your burdens. He has seen your affliction and He has come down. For those of you maybe who say, why is God not doing anything about the suffering in my life? He did something 2,000 years ago. He came down. His name was Jesus. Israel in Egypt had Moses. We have Jesus. He came from heaven to earth and He didn't just come to show us the way. He came so He can forgive us of our sins. He can heal our diseases and He can deliver us from our demons. Can somebody say, praise you Jesus. <laughs> Moses went to deliver Israel out of Egypt, not Egyptians out of Egypt. Abraham delivered Lot out of his captivity, not other people that he did not know. Seven times in book of Judges, God delivered his people from their bondage. Esther was crying out for the deliverance of her people from the claws of Haman. Jesus drove out demons out of Bible believing Jewish people. And when a Gentile woman wanted deliverance, he said, it's the children's bread. Let's make this plain and once and for all. Deliverance belongs to God's children. If you became a Christian and demons from your past are harassing you, deliverance belongs to you. Let no pastor with more degrees than a thermometer convince you otherwise. Don't let some kind of a pastor or minister or a scholar convince you who only spent his life in a university and never been in the trenches and never experienced the power of Jesus convince you otherwise. You can be set free. I'm not saying you don't need medicine but you need a miracle maker. His name is Jesus. Your solution might not be therapy. Your solution is Jesus. If you have a demon, pills cannot help you. If you have a demon, flesh cannot help you. If you have a demon, works cannot help you. You need deliverance. Moses did not come to Egypt. Can you give me a little bit more juice? Moses did not come to, to Egypt and told Israelites to work harder. He came to Egypt and understood if Israelites work harder, Pharaoh gets stronger. If your problem is a demon, hard work never removes the demon. Fasting and prayer does not remove a demon. Fasting and prayer can empower a deliverance minister to remove a demon. But what removes a demon is the power of the name of Jesus. Moses knew 
if I tell all these slaves work harder and one day you'll get out of Egypt that is not what's going to get him out of Egypt God never told Israelites to work harder in Egypt he told Moses to confront the real issue the real issue is there is a Pharaoh behind bondage and if you want to be free you have to confront that and you can't negotiate with that Pharaoh you can't beg that Pharaoh you can't ask that Pharaoh he cannot be reasoned with he cannot be pleased there is no gift you can give him there is no check you can write to him it's a confrontation this is not a negotiation. This is not a conversation. It's a confrontation. It's a battle between two kingdoms. It's a conflict between light and darkness. And God told Moses, go and tell that Pharaoh, let my people go. Let them go. You held them too long. They are my people. I died for them. I have a covenant with them. They are the children of Abraham. They are descendants of Isaac. They are descendants of Jacob. To them belongs the Canaan land. You enslaved them too long. If they work harder, you get bigger. Bigger pyramids, bigger houses. But the time has come. I heard the cry of my people and I have come down. Moses, tell that Pharaoh, let my people go. That's why we came to this conference to tell every demon that has held you hostage, to tell the spirit of fear, to tell the spirit of depression, to tell that spirit spouse, to tell those nightmares, let my people go. I can't hear you. Let my people Have you noticed God said, my people? Those of you who think deliverance is not for Christians, have you noticed it was God's people? God was delivering? My means they belong to me. You can be a believer and be in bondage. But you can't be free if you don't belong to Jesus. Because when you belong to Jesus, God begins to lay a claim upon your life. And this is what the deliverance is. It's a confrontation with the powers of demons. We're not asking God. He's asking us to go to Pharaoh. It was God who told Moses to confront Pharaoh. It wasn't Moses that was asking God to deliver the people. The people couldn't work their way out of Egypt. When you have a demonic oppression, you can't work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You gotta cast the demon out. You got to break the curse. You got to disconnect yourself from that soul tie so that then you can work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Demons enter legally but they only leave by force. Some demons enter us because of our parents and grandparents. That's why a lot of times demons will say I've been there for five generations. You have to understand whatever you don't transform gets transferred. If you don't get transformed as a Christian and disconnect generational curses, demons don't die. They get passed on to the next of kin. And you inherit those demons if your parents, grandparents did witchcraft and Satanism and dedicated your lineage to the devil. Your lineage belongs to the devil. You can, you can belong to Jesus but demons will lay a claim until somebody revokes that right. Until somebody says it ran in my family until it ran into me. Demons need to be revoked and cast out. They don't get tired, they don't get exhausted and there is plenty of them for every family tree. If you think they will get tired of tormenting and harassing you, you are wrong. They only get forced out. Satan knows only one word and that is power. He doesn't sympathize with your tears. He doesn't sympathize with the fact that everybody in the family dies at 45. He doesn't sympathize with the fact that you are on your seventh marriage and you can't sleep at night and you're taking so much pills. He doesn't care. He's not moved by your tears. He's only moved by one thing and that is force. He can come in legally. But he can only be forced out forcefully. Israel came into Egypt because there was a time that they were hungry. Maybe you went into witchcraft out of curiosity. 
Maybe you went into witchcraft because you were hungry to know the future. You read tarot cards. You looked up to horoscopes. You played with Ouija boards because that's exactly what TikTokers tell us to do. You consulted the spirit guides because that's exactly what's happening in, in our movie theaters. It's saturated with supernatural without the Holy Spirit. And whatever your reason to Egypt was, at first I'm pretty sure it was fun and games. As exactly it was for Israel. At first it was great until Pharaoh's changed. Sooner or later, every person that goes into Egypt gets tormented by Egypt. It gets harassed by demons. And they start to torment your life. But demons only know one thing and they know force. They need to be forced out. Not human anger, not physical force, but the force of the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, nor give place to the devil. Some of us, we open the door to demons, not because of witchcraft, but because we kept on sinning, kept on sinning, and we never dealt with a sin. The Bible says don't give place to the devil. An opportunity is a sin that is careless and a deliberate act over time that gives the devil an opportunity to, give, to get access to you. If you keep on sinning, I'm not saying you will get a demon all the time, but you are high, most likely to get a demon. This is one crazy thing about deliverance you must know. It's not the crazy people that have demons. It's the normal ones. The most surprising part about deliverance is the ones you think have them, don't have them. And the ones that you think, there's no way and they can have them. If you think that demons only enter into people that are really, 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 really bad and it's everybody except you, you're wrong. Demons work like mice. They don't read signs. They only see one thing, an opening. They work like mosquitoes. Mosquitoes don't check the title deed of the house before they fly in. Mosquitoes don't check if you made the payments on that house. If they see an opening, they fly in. That's why Paul tells us, just because you speak in tongue, just because you prophesy, just because you're a church member, pastor or apostle, do not give place to the devil that's why Christians have no business dressing up as witches on Halloween you have no business celebrating Halloween don't give place to the devil you have no business bringing alcohol to your dinner table you have no business showing horror films to your children you have no business subscribing to Playboy magazine or OnlyFans do not give place to the devil. For those of you who are like, I don't believe in demons. They believe in you. It's foolish to say, I don't believe in mosquitoes. Open the window and in the morning you will say, ah, it scratches. I wonder why it itches. I wonder why my sleep itches all the time. I wonder why there is incurable diseases itches all the time. Mosquito bit you. And it keeps biting you and biting you and biting you. And then you kept your windows open because American culture taught you to keep your mind open. It's so open your brains are falling out. We're not American first. We're Christians first. Our culture is the kingdom culture. We belong to the light, not to the darkness. We're not here to fit in. We're here to stand out. We're not here to please the culture. We are here to be the light and to be the soul. Do not give place to the devil. Don't step on his territory. People say, well, I'm not sure if this is demonic. If in doubt, throw it out. If in doubt, don't come close. Amen. Amen. Here are a few signs that you potentially could have a demon. If you practiced witchcraft and you didn't renounce it. If you were involved in Freemasonry, Mormonism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism. If you sought guidance from 
occult practices like Ouija boards, charming, seances, necromancy, crystal balls, palm reading, astrology, horoscopes, fortune telling, false dreams, reading coffee grounds and tea leaves, drip wax and bones, casting spells and having spells being cast on you. If you have compulsive thoughts of suicide or thoughts to blaspheme, depression that you can't shake off, anxiety, heaviness and fear and you feel an evil presence. When you have pain without unjust, with no reason, stress, migraines, allergies, sleep issues, insomnia, arthritis. You lose control for no reason. In fact, you actually say that. I lost control. You didn't. Someone took it. Someone was in control and that someone caused you to have a DUI. And it's not the Holy Ghost by the way. Because when He comes you get self-control. If you lose control and you threw a hammer at one of your children, you got a demon. I don't care what your therapist told you, you got a demon. It's called the spirit of rage. And that spirit hates me right now. Because I'm going to expose it. And you need to be delivered. I'm not making this up. We've seen young men throw hammers at their family. They thought it was normal. They got diagnosed and put up prescription pills. Dressed in the suit, performing in the bands in the local high schools. Until they show up in the service and that spirit. When that spirit was cast out, then so was the hammer throwing. You're not Thor. You don't throw hammers. Come on somebody. Sudden surges of violent rage, uncontrollable anger, feelings of hostility, nightmares, sleep paralysis, feeling evil presence in your sleep, constantly seeing dead people, animals appearing or chasing you in the dream, having sex in the dream with someone, waking up and releasing all of the stuff and, and then not having affection for your spouse. You're not having sex with the person. You're having sex with the demon. It keeps on happening every week and every in and out. It's a succubus and it's an incubus. It's an evil spirit and it needs to be cast out. You should have sex in real life, not in some imaginary world and with your spouse. We just need to put that in there right away because so all the young people don't go in. It's like, oh yeah, he told us to have sex. A restlessness around spiritual world, tremendous hostility or fear when encountering someone who does deliverance. <laughs> Extreme restlessness around spiritual things. You're completely alert to watch Netflix, any crime TV show, six, seven hours. The only time you open Psalms and literally two verses in. <laughs> yawning all the time at church. Oh, Vlad thinks everything is a demon. Not everything, but a lot of things are. Who do you think benefits from that? The Bible talks about spirit of slumber. Slumber is a spirit. I'm not talking about sleep. I'm talking about when it shuts you down. Just when you need to pay attention. Strong desires, urges that are not in your body, but it's almost like something in you wants to eat. Nicotine, smoke cigarettes and watch porn. And when you give it, it quiets down and goes back in the basement for three, five, six days because it's fed. And when you cast it out, those urges are gone because those demons are the ones that have the urges, not you. And once they're out, you can be delivered, you can be set free. Hearing voices in your mind that mock, intimidate, accuse, threaten, attain to bargain. And these voices refer to themselves as him and her. They got their own pronouns in the third person. That's not him and her. It's a demon. It's an unclean spirit and it needs to be removed. The only voice you should hear is the voice of your father. 
the voice of the Holy Spirit amen when deliverance happens God removes the evil spirits but I want you to notice to what purpose he removes the evil spirits and this is the part that I've read and I'm gonna read again in Exodus chapter 9 verse 1 let my people go that they may serve me and I'm gonna skip pretty much all of my points and go to the last last two deliverance moves you from slavery to service deliverance is not to move you from pain to I have more time I have more freedom and I can do whatever I want God delivers you not so you can have a better life it's so that you can have a better Lord the benefit is better sleep better health the benefit is that you're not tormented but the motive is not to make your life better please hear me loud and clear God doesn't deliver you so you don't spend money on gambling and so you can save more money it's so that you can serve more I find it interesting over 19 times God told Pharaoh so that they will serve me he doesn't say so that they will go to the promised land he doesn't say so it's not fair Pharaoh you've been mistreating them it's about human dignity and value it's a social injustice of the decade how dare you do that Pharaoh it's not right the human right is at stake none of that all these are benefits not the causes of deliverance God did not say so that they will finally build their own homes instead of building you a pyramid God didn't say so they can finally enter the land with milk and honey it's so that they will serve me God has a reason to set you free and a lot of times that reason is not the same reason for why you want to be free because most of us when we want to be free we want to get rid of the voices we want to get rid of the urges we want to get rid of the guilt we want to get rid of the this thing that drives our life God's reason is different God's reason is for service not for me to do what I want not for me to have more freedom not for me to have more life not for me to have more joy but so that for God to have more of me let me say this you cannot get more of God once you get God God doesn't give himself in parts he gives himself completely you can get to know more of God but you can never get more of God you get all of him at once but you get to know him it will take eternity to get to know him but God can get more of you when he delivers you God delivers you so he can get more of you so you can serve him now this is the part that Israel missed Israel thought they got delivered because God saw how painful their life was and he felt bad for them and he set them free so instead of serving him in the wilderness they whined to him in the wilderness they complained to him in the wilderness they caused him suffering constantly complaining and whining why because they didn't understand they were set free to serve God they were not set free to enter the promised land first promised land was later promised land was a benefit serving God in the wilderness was the reason which means when you get delivered most likely God will not take you to your promised land he will take you to your wilderness and in that wilderness God wants you to serve him that means right after this conference you think I'm gonna step into Canaan and big giants are gonna fall most likely some of you will step into a short period of time where things might be dry and God says that you may serve me in the wilderness you will serve me when things are not easy when things are maybe slightly difficult some of you say but Vlad after deliverance I'm supposed to have my life better 
Yes, but not right away. I had my wisdom teeth pulled out about three weeks ago. They said that the bacteria was spreading to other teeth, so they had to remove the wisdom teeth. When they removed my teeth, my life did not get better. In fact, next three days, I had to take pain medication just not to die out of pain. And I'm thinking, this is supposed to work better. But in reality, I'm suffering more. Because see, when you get delivered, God pulls out the wisdom teeth. God pulls out that stuff. And next few weeks, next few months, next even for some of you few years, God will take you through a season where He wants you to be tested in service. But most of us, during that time, we don't read the Bible, we don't go to church, we don't pray, we don't fast, and we're like, where is my wells I didn't build, my houses I didn't build. My friend, you're going to them, but you're going to them through serving, serving, and serving God. Deliverance without discipleship leads to disappointment. If you get delivered and you don't get grounded in the local church, if you get delivered and you're simply looking for your next deliverance instead of your next small group, if you get delivered and instead of looking for your Bible reading plan, you're looking where you can get another prophecy and you're constantly going from another high experience to another high experience, God will throw you in the wilderness where all of your feelings will die. Not because you need another deliverance, it's because you need to take another step and serve Him in the wilderness. Love Him in the wilderness. Read the Bible in the wilderness. Read and stay with God in the wilderness. Can somebody say amen? amen. I want to encourage you when you go home and you enter the wilderness season. Wilderness is not bad. Wilderness is a transition between your deliverance and your dominion. The wilderness is the discipleship. It's the discipline. It's the time when the feelings die and only your convictions live. And God says in that season, serve me. Not your feelings, not your mood, not your mood, but serve me. Not just I believe in God. Demons believe in God. They're still demons. Serve God. Dedicate your time for God. If you spend six hours on TikTok, God deserves at least six hours. If you spend 20,000 in gambling, your tithe should be at least 20,000. If you spend $500 on weed, your tithe better be at least 500. Why? That you may serve me. You're not delivered so you can save money. You're delivered so you can serve God. You're not delivered so you can sleep better. You're delivered so God can communicate to you in your sleep. That you may serve me. Touch your neighbor say that you may serve me. Touch your other neighbor say that you may serve me. No, 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 not me, him. That you may serve me. Amen. And I want you to notice the last thing, and this is very important, before we pray and before you go home. When demons come back, don't go back to your old ways. Demons will come back, but not inside. They will come back on the outside the next day. That's exactly what happened to Israel. They get delivered, sing the song, share the testimony, it gets posted on Instagram, on Facebook. Praise God. Took a selfie. Even took the photo with one of the demon slayers. Praise be to God. I got the book, got the t-shirt, I got a sign. Declared it, named it, claimed it, blabbed it, grabbed it, confessed it, possessed it. I got it all. And I got home. And two days later, they all came back. That's exactly what happened to Israel. A few days later, that Pharaoh was right behind them. Oh no, he wasn't sending them bonus checks. This wasn't a, uh, a compensation for the time that they spent in Egypt. This was him saying, I want to bring you back. And I want you to notice this. Israel never went back. Nor did they ask for another deliverance. Nor did they ask for another plague. Plague number 11. No more plagues. What did they do? They recognized we are out of his grip. 
All he can do is try to take us back. But he can't because we're not slaves. So now the only way he can get us back if we choose, listen to every word that I'm about to say. If we choose to go back, if we choose to go forward, he will still walk behind us for a few more steps until the Red Sea catches up. The same demons that lived on the outside will claim to be on the in that lived on the inside will claim to be on the outs on the outside will say we're still on the inside few days after your deliverance. Don't freak out. Don't get scared. Don't sign up for next race to deliver to get delivered again. Don't look for another deliverance minister. Do not go back to what you did that got those demons in the first place and then just keep on going why because sooner or later you will look back and you will see that pharaoh's chariot wheels are falling off falling off that depression gets quieter the next day quieter the next day and as you keep on walking forward it begins to get drowned in the sea of your walking forward keep on walking forward keep on fighting keep on standing your ground don't entertain those thoughts now i want to address one issue that i believe has confused more christians than anything else don dickerman calls it the devil's favorite verse and this is this and some of you have asked so much deliverance why nobody has warned these christians they'll get seven demons more in the Bible, I'm going to read this verse. Matthew 12, 43, it says this. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man. I want you to see this. It does not say when an unclean spirit gets cast out. This is not talking about deliverance. Demons go out, but they were not cast out. Like demons left Saul only to come back but they were never removed they were never cast out it's kind of like you left your house and you came to the conference you were not expelled from your house you're gonna come back to your house when you're done with what you're doing when a demon goes out meaning he wasn't cast out he just simply at his own will chooses to leave the person and come back when the demon goes out of a person he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none verse 44 and then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Most Christians take this verse and say this. This means if you get delivered and if your life is cleaned up, but it's not filled with Jesus, demons will come back with seven more and just get in and break havoc which means I was better before I was delivered why would I want to be delivered to potentially get seven more sorry I'd rather keep that one demon that I got under control and that I'm half medicating and half controlling and I got a prescription for that demon and I've domesticated that demon already I honestly lived with it for 20 years, 20 more years. It's not that bad. But imagine if this homeboy brings seven more. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm sorry, but I'm not signing up for this deliverance. Why? I don't want to get seven. That's not what this means. You don't get seven demons after you get delivered. You only get seven demons if you don't get delivered. Why? Because the door is open never closed and the demon at their own will can bring their groupings spirit of anger will bring spirit of murder spirit of porn will bring spirit of homosexuality spirit of homosexuality will bring the spirit of perversion it will bring the child porn inside all of these spirits as long as there is an open door these demons have a traffic into your life but once you cast them out and once the door is closed 
they can't get in. Now, let me give you an encouragement. For those of you who are like, oh, but I feel empty, they'll come in. Absolutely not. Demons don't come because you're empty. They come because they have an open door. I have a car right now standing on the parking lot. It's empty. You can't get in there because it's closed. My house is empty right now. You can't get in there. Why? It's closed. Demons can't get in when they want to. There is legal laws that protect you. Otherwise, we will all have demons always coming in and out. Absolutely not. When you get delivered, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. There is no seven more demons. Seven ways they will leave you. Seven ways they will depart from you. Once God sets you free, He sets you free indeed. Keep going forward. Don't go back. Keep marching forward and they will drown in the sea. Amen. And if you feel empty, absolutely don't be discouraged. Why? Because they can't enter in because you're empty. If they could, how many of us feel empty every once in a while? I felt empty this morning because I was tired. Demons can't get in because I'm empty. They can only get in when I'm open. And I'm not open for business. I'm closed because I belong to Jesus and you belong to Jesus. Amen. And even if my house is messy, I'm still not open. Even if I spilled coffee on the carpet, I'm still not open for you, demon. I'm still not open. Why? I am Jesus' mask. He's working on me. He's cleansing me right now. So no demon is welcome in my house. Not seven, not one. None of them can come in. I am headed to my promised land. Let my people go.